So let's just let's just start let's let's start happy because you know that's that's my sense of things, right? Um, the Chicago Police Department has killed more children since 2013 than any other local law enforcement agency, according to the Mapping Police Violence Accountability data set. Um, the latest one was 13 years of age who was fatally shot last month. Um, the most recent and youngest victim at the hands of the Chicago PD. Uh, how did France not get angry at it? Because I mean, who knows? They got other stuff to be angry about. Um, (laughs) um, the, the, um, footage from, uh, Adam uh, Toledo, who was the 13 year old, by the way, showed him with his hands up. Uh, he was a seventh grader, by the way. So keep that in mind. Seventh grader, right? He's standing there with his hands up and the fucking Chicago PD drops him. Uh, and if you're wondering, is this, is this a third party account? Is this testimony we can trust? No, this is straight from the body cam footage of the officers on the scene. You can watch it for yourself if you want to see a 13 year old get executed by the police. Um, but if you just want to take my word for it, there you go. Um, Adam had his hands up in the air and the police officers summarily executed a seventh grader. So that's Chicago PD. Let's just start talking about that. Um, (laughs) The uh, the majority of the victims, of course, were black um, with a uh, minor note to be mentioned as a few were Hispanic and a couple of like unknown races, others, that sort of thing. Um, but Chicago, NYPD, Columbus PD, Harris County, Texas, Houston PD, Jacksonville, LAPD, all have honorable, what's up, Cricks? All have honorable mention for extrajudicially assassinating children. Children. Like literal children. Not, oh, he turns 18 in three months. No, like 13 year olds. Like 12, you know, that sort of shit. Like, so. Yeah, um, oh, we're we're like what March? Yeah, we're March sixteenth. Adam Toledo, age thirteen, just to reiterate, was one of at least two hundred and sixty-five people that have been shot and killed by police this year per uh, one independent verif- uh, verifying database. Because remember, in this country, the police are not accountable; they do not have to submit these statistics. We have no federal database of this, and all tracking of police shootings and de- uh, po- and deaths by police in this country are done either vo- through voluntary submission of the police departments for. Case- Cases that they choose to submit or by third party journalist and academic tracking using uh, public data sources as uh, as again 35. Why did it come in as undefined? I'm sorry that it came in as undefined. I'm going to have to look at that. Um, I'm going to have to look at that scripting behind the scenes. Oh, and it just fucking did a thing. Oh, this is going to be a thing. Hang on. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Um, let me do a, a test run here. Um, raid. There we go. There's the 51. There's the 51. Sorry, sorry it didn't come up, uh, uh, Hilda Beast, but thank you. Thank you for the raid. Um, we're just doing Popo's Bizarre Adventures. It's a new, it's going to be a recurring, but it's a new segment we've uh, spun up for the show. Um, where we talk about all of the wacky shenanigans that the police all across the world, but, you know, specifically with the bent in America, because then, you know, it's the place where I live, uh, get up to. And right now we're talking about the uh, various police accountability projects uh, uh, vis-a-vis the uh, Chicago having the highest rate of killing kids, literal kids, uh, in this country. Uh, Chicago just uh, summarily executed, uh, extrajudicially assassinated a 13-year-old last month, making it the youngest victim on the rolls for this year. Um, out of the 265 that we are aware of, because as I was just pointing out before you came in, if you were not aware that in the United States, the police departments, uh, 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 local, state, county, federal, none of them are required to actually submit this data. So we have a centralized database of tracking of the amounts of deaths caused by police. All of the numbers that we actually have are done by third party journalists or academic associations that tr- do their very best using FOIA and uh, public news uh, sources to track this data. So when I say we have at least 265, that's the ones that we can track. Those are the ones that we can keep account of. Uh, outside of that, sometimes it's just hands up. Um, but anyway, Adam Toledo was the latest. He was a 13-year-old seventh grader in Chicago who 
her uh, body cam footage, we now know, was standing there with his hands up when the police extrajudicially assassinated him. Just straight up murked him on the fucking street. Just a 13-year-old seventh grader, little fucking basically prepubescent kid standing there with his fucking hands up and the cops just drop him. Um, and so, you know, fucking not a third party account, not witness testimony, hard video footage. So that's, that's where we are on the beginning of the story. This is where we started, by the way, I figured we'd start, we'd start happy with the, uh, police executions of children on a national scale. Um, so for those coming in with Hilda Beast, uh, wondering what is Kai's sensibility, sense of humor, and uh, and sort of how I view the world, yeah, let's let's start there. Murdering kids. Um, hey, if you're gonna condemn the cops, let's condemn the fucking cops, right? Start strong. And while we're talking about condemning the cops and starting strong, the Houston Police Department, honorable mention, has another officer in the news. This is the second one in a month. Um, who's up on charges for possession of child pornography. <laughs> this is this is uh, 10 counts of child pornography for this creepy motherfucker, Justin Weber. And if you're wondering why I call him a creepy motherfucker, it's because he's a creepy motherfucker. Um, hold on, let me get, let me try and get you a picture of him. I got some video. Um, there we go. No, 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 no. Here you go. This is this is a uh, former po Houston police officer Justin Weber who will prop will probably uh, I don't need your statement thank you thank you kindly uh, who will probably end up getting a lifetime pension knowing police officers in this country and the union standards that they uh, the, the unionization and contract standards that the police departments are held to uh, in most cities he will probably end up with a lifetime pension but either way the 29 year old has been relieved of duty and is facing 10 counts of uh, possession of child pornography he's the second Houston police officer to go down for this in in like a month because I just had to do another one of these stories in recent memory. Houston PD's got uh, apparently a kitty diddler problem. But I mean, uh, it's about par for the course, isn't it? With these sorts of uh, authoritarian abusive individuals. Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, one of my favorites. This is sort of a win. Um, the <coughs> cops in Texas, that checks out, all right. Um, Georgia, uh, this has been five years in the making. A house party in Georgia that had um, 65 young people. It's a fucking house party, right? I mean, fucking, what are you, fucking 45 at a house party? It's kids. Kids go to house parties, right? Um, 65 young people at a house party. The police show up and they find a, a literally like a small bag, like a dime bag. Um, a, sp uh, a dime bag of fucking pot outside the house somewhere. And so they round up and arrest 65 kids. The police have been ordered to pay a million dollar settlement for that one. Um, it's pittance, it's chump change, but yeah, it shows exactly how insane it is. They just started rounding people up and arresting them. Um, fucking, so, you know, yeah, scary weed, fucking Georgia, it's Georgia. Georgia's still, it's still like 1956 in Georgia, right? I'm not, I'm not sure that they even know that women and black people have rights yet. Um, so, you know, I, again, I lived in that part of the country. Don't go there. It's not worth it. It's a terrible part of the country. Just leave if you can. I know it's difficult to just leave, but I swear to God, like sell all your stuff, buy a Greyhound bus ticket, hitchhike to the Greyhound terminal and get the fuck out because that part of the country is goddamn awful. Um, yeah, they found it outside. Yeah, it's a fucking dime bag. Chances are they planted it. I mean, it's I, again, I told this story the other night. My stepdad was told, for those of you who don't know who came in with Hilda Beast, my step my stepfather is a former judge and grew up and is friends with the the uh, was the friends with the bureau chief of the head of the ATF and is deeply, deeply connected with uh, with a whole bunch of that sort of stuff, right? Um he had an NYPD cop tell him when he came down from Boston and in, in, uh, into New York uh, and lived there for a few years, he had an NYPD officer literally tell him, uh, ask him, he's like, Do you you got a dump gun? He's like, What? You got a drop gun? say like, no he's like get a drop gun dude my stepdad it, it's it's reliable like he my stepdad doesn't make shit like that up it's just not what he does um he had an nypd officer straight up tell him to get a drop gun and fucking just in case you have to put somebody down right this is 
cops do this sort of shit all the time. Dude, Baltimore got caught doing this shit. NYPD's got caught doing this shit. Chicago's got caught doing this shit. LA's got caught doing this shit. Dude, so many police departments get caught drop uh, do, using drop guns and fucking planting, uh, planting drugs and shit. Yeah, I wouldn't put him past it for a second to put a drop a dime bag outside some pe- teenager's fucking house party and then round up 65 fucking teenagers because they think they can milk their parents for a few bucks. Get them in the system, right? Get them in the system. Get the fucking pro- uh, probation officers in. The probation officers all have to be charged. Uh, get uh, Be paid the fucking, you know, all that processing, court fees, fines, all that bullshit. It's just a fucking revenue stream for these pieces of shit. So, <clears throat> um, then they're um, moving on, but still in the same state because... Why go, why even leave the state? Because you don't need to. These pieces of shit are just ripe everywhere. Um, fucking ex Georgia, uh, county, uh, ex Georgia, uh, Georgia chef, uh, sheriff's deputy has just pleaded guilty this week to shooting a university of Georgia graduate. He thought was having an affair with his wife. Was the individual having his affair with his wife? We don't fucking know, but he thought he was. So he killed him. He, um, he was indicted on charges of malice murder, felony murder, first degree home invasion, two counts of aggravated assault, and two counts of firearm possession. Pleaded guilty to felony murder and aggravated assault, but he was given an additional 10 years for the aggravated charge. Um, he was at a cookout with the uh, fucking... Um, uh, uh, Clower, uh, the, 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 the university student who, uh, was at a cookout with his friends on November 10th, 2019. And, uh, the, the cop's wife a- had been, uh, invited over. Um, and so the deputy used a cell phone app to track her. He entered the man's home with the gun in his hand. As the dude tried to flee, he shot him in the hand and the back uh, and twice in the back. After he sh- uh, after he shot the uh, shot the man, he then uh, it, it, <laughs> he um, he called nine one one. He was a plain uh, plain clothes, um, and he admitted shooting the college student. He straight up called nine one one and said, "I just shot somebody. My wife was cheating on me, and I couldn't take it. I didn't shoot her. I shot the guy. I couldn't stop myself. I can't go to jail." That's that's literally the nine one one recording. He just thought he you know. He'd shoot him. Um, I, I, you know, this is cop logic. This isn't normal functioning human being logic. This is cop logic. My wife's cheating on me, so let me just go shoot somebody. And he, he fucking called 911 thinking he'd be fine. Because cops think they're fine. Like, honestly, I'm surprised he, I'm surprised he got kicked off the force, let alone charged. We've got sincerely, uh, we, we've got sincere, oh, I mean, fuck, I, Rev, he's 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 fucked. He 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 accepted the guilty play. So apparently it wasn't going to fly. It's Georgia. It's Georgia. Fucking dude, they they've they've spent years dismantling those sorts of things. Um let's see. Also, uh okay, yeah, that one was 2 days ago, I think. Uh the Scottsboro officer who killed his uh uh um he was on leave. Uh, Scottsboro uh, officer was a uh, police officer was on leave and then shot his estranged wife before killing himself. Um, he he yeah he he did he did the typical like dude whose marriage fell apart because of his job sort of situation and like you know did the standard forty percent cop move and fucking decided that he should just you know. And but she survived. She's she's still alive. We'll see if she re- has a full recovery or not. But the estranged wife at least has survived the incident. Um, hopefully, I mean, I'm not victim blaming here. I'm not victim blaming. Don't take it that way. But hopefully, she's learned her lesson and she doesn't marry another cop. Because that does, for those of you who don't know, increases your chances of domestic violence by about forty percent. So like. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to see a statistical analysis of dual police households, like where the wife and the husband are both cops. I would love to see a statistical analysis of that because we've seen incidents of that um, over the course of this fucking project that is probably radical. We've had a few of those that we've talked about where the wife is a deputy and the, the husband is a deputy. Like Chicago was the last one that happened last year. The end of last year? I forget when that one happened. We had to cover that one. Uh, That one we pretty much covered live. Um, 
Um, and so, like, yeah, it was um, uh, fucking. She put him down, I think, in that instance. What's up, Squiddy? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, Squiddy, if you want, go watch Monday's stream. It's a fucking fireball. I come in hot and heavy um, and accuse Twitch of rampant anti-LGBTQ uh, um, policies, um, homophobic and transphobic policies on the mod staff, and generally just make the statement that Twitch wants gay kids dead. Um, so, like, yeah. I, ca I came in pretty hot and uh, fucking furious on Monday, so if you want to see some riled up, um, check Monday's VOD. Um, fucking <laughs> prognostic. Their household is basically a Waffle House at 3 a.m., um, fucking, I thought he shot her twice. I, I don't even remember it to be perfectly honest. Like he, no, 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 no. She said he drew a gun on her and that she defended herself. I think that that was the, that, the, the line that was given. I've never heard shit about it ever since then though. Like they buried that one. That was super fucking embarrassing for the department. So Oh, God damn it, Snappy. Snappy! Snappy, read the text. For the love of God, please and thank you. Don't sub on Twitch. I mean, I know you guys want to get rid of the ads, and I respect that, but holy shit, we need to stop giving money to Amazon. We need to support creators better. We need to get this fucking stuff. Like, I, I, it, dude, just fucking ignore the ad for 30 seconds. Just, like, don't look at it. Don't listen to it. Turn the fucking volume down. Dude, fucking Glazy, what, like, what am I supposed to do here? Like... Right? Like, I mean, there's only, like, there's only so much you can do with this before it becomes absolutely fucking obnoxious on the screen. So, like, uh, no, I can't turn ads off, Karina. There's no way to do that. I either front load the ads or I, I put the ads randomly multiple times through the stream. Those are the options for Twitch is multiple ads through the stream or fucking um, a front loaded ad. And I figure front loading is better. It just gets it out of the way, get it out of your system, get it done and move on with it. 30 seconds of just don't, don't fucking look at the screen. Turn your volume all the way down. Don't listen to it. Like don't, don't pay any attention to those fucking ads. And then just, you know, you're by it. Um, so what do I want? What, uh, uh, apropos of what? A run as a marquee on the bottom of the screen. Uh, uh, we're probably going to do a graphic kit for it, Hilda. Um, <laughs> Rev, yes, these terrible Twitch ads, which I have definitely seen before. Um, yeah, Snappy, use use the sub command, do it on coffee. I, uh, Dude, I get a bigger cut on coffee. Fucking Je Bezos doesn't fucking get, get a cut. Right? Like, Thiel's getting a cut. I mean, PayPal takes a cut basically during the transfer, but coffee doesn't take a cut. Right? So the $5 subscription to a coffee subscription, which we have subscriptions, um, a $5 subscription on coffee gets me $4.09 if you're American, $4.01 if you're Cana Canadian with the, the currency transfer. Um, and on Twitch, it would get $2.50. So you're, you're nearly doubling what a creator gets off of like the subscriptions just by doing coffee instead of Twitch. And I get the fucking, you know, the ads. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just better across the board. It's better. Like it's, it's less money going to Jeff Bezos, less money going into Twitch's pockets because Twitch needs to learn a fucking lesson. Um, and like, yeah, just across the board. It's better. It's better. Okay. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> oh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, we did that one. Oh, um, Congress has closed the loophole that allows federal officers to claim sex with a detainee as consensual. Um, 
the loophole existed in 35 states only four years ago. Um, six states changed it since the bill was proposed, but Congress last week passed a bill that explicitly prohibits federal law enforcement officers from having sex with people in their custody. Did you think that it would have already been illegal to do that or against regulations? Yeah, you would have thought, huh? No, it wasn't. It was perfectly legal for a fucking poli a federal police officer to rape someone in their custody and then just claim that it was uh, consensual. And there's very little that can be done. Um, so all you can do is explicitly forbid it from occurring and say, under no circumstances are you allowed to have sex with a detainee and go from there. But up until that point, it did allow officers to literally avoid rape convictions by claiming any such encounter was consensual. That's a very real thing. It's not speculation. It's not hyperbole. It's not hypothesis. This is a thing that has occurred at the local, state, and federal level multiple times. Um, one of the most recent was in New York, and that's when New York closed, closed their wheel pole. It was when two male officers like raped uh, uh, raped one of their detainees, and they both claimed, oh, no, 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 no. She, she offered to give us blowjobs and shit like that, and it was... But uh, one of the side effects of that case was that New York closed that loophole. But now at the federal level, it's closed, but it only includes federal police officers. So states still have to catch up on this one. This isn't an overarching law for all of the United States. This is merely a federal police officer exclusionary clause, which means there's still, I think... 28 or 29 states in the United States that allow police officers to have sex with detainees in their custody, which opens the door for rape, just straight up rape. Um, so yeah. All right. Uh, Dig, you came into Popo's Bizarre Adventures, a new segment that we will slowly build up, create more graphics for, and do add more production to. But we are going to be... We, it is the the advent, the misadventures of police uh, around the globe, but especially in the U.S. are a is a font is a never ending font of content. So we decided that since I covered on a regular basis anyway, we should create uh, some, you know, content around it. Um, and so we are calling it Popo's Bizarre Adventures, and um, it has been quite the wind-up already. Um, years ago, if you told me there'd be an app called Twitch, I assumed it was a Silk Road for amphetamines. Uh, America's laws are dumb, and I'm saying that as a Canadian, we can't pass shit without a queen. Um, do I have a way to give money that isn't through a system created by a capitalist? I'm an absolutist. Yeah, internet opinions. You want to fucking send me some crypto? You can send me some crypto. I can get you a wallet address, no problem. Um, so like, yeah, I can, I can get you, uh, I can get you like an anonymous, like if you want to use Monero, which is relatively anonymous in the grand scheme of things. Um, yeah, hundred percent. We can, we can get you an address for that and go from there. Um, uh, you're still emotionally attached to the rotten barrel. Dude, I rev, I, 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 I feel you on that one. I, I, dude, Popo's Adv Bizarre Adventures is just too good to turn up. Uh, to, to pass up. Um, we were we were down to the rotten barrel, and the rotten barrel works on multiple levels. But the meme potential, the graphic potential, the the graphic pack, and the like, the the production potential of Popo's Advar Bizarre Adventures, plus the applicability to marketability to like millennials and Gen Zers, is just infinite at that point. We couldn't we couldn't turn. I I couldn't if it's several. We couldn't turn it up. We could we couldn't turn it away. Uh, it's a good fucking name. But yeah, we were going to go with the Rotten Barrel prior to that. Um, I... uh, fucking, I don't, I don't, Karina, I don't care. Like, look, that, that's, if we, if we concern ourselves with the, 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 that small minority. Oh, I think fucking, dude, I think they just won. I think they just won. A Ramsey's been a Ramsey's been keeping me up to date on the the Dutch elections, and it looks like he may have been elected. He, there's there's a non-zero chance that a Ramsey is going to be like a politician for the Greens. I think. Um, 
and the greens the greens now have the largest uh percentage of uh, they are the largest party in the netherlands right now they gained up uh, they gained even more seats um from where they once were and they they were already a record setting group uh, four years ago um and they've gained even more seats now and a ramsey's running as as one of the green party members um and he's just he's keeping me up to date behind the scenes and he just sent me a photo and i'm pretty sure um that's a ramsey by the way if you you guys don't know who he is he's a uh, dutch streamer and anarchist and you know just all around cool dude um but it looks like um it looks like there's some happiness going on over there right now um so it looks like they may um they may be doing some shit <laughs> they may be doing some shit. Um, all right. That yes, beast. That's that's what we're talking about. Like we can the the popos thing is definitely like infinitely memeable. It's infinitely memeable. Um, so did the person who wanted a uh, non uh, 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 a a a, uh, wanted to give money through a non-capitalist methodology as an absolutist just like completely leave when I gave them an opportunity to give money through a non-capitalist methodology just curious um and thank you guillotine um uh, yeah Karina it's not about you that's 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 the first thing you need to learn about marketing Karina uh, well then your absolutism is, uh, is failing you completely. You're an absolutist about nothing. Sorry to critique your position, but your position is untenable at best, um, and is a non-functioning position to hold. It's, it's probably time that you learn a touch of pragmatic compromise. Um, <clears throat> so. All right, back to Popo's Bizarre Adventures. Let's keep doing the fucking headlines because I got a million of them because it is, as I said, the never-ending font of content. Um, so, uh, um, oh God, I don't even know where the fuck is. Is that Jersey based on, it's New Jersey. I was just based off the fucking name. Uh, uh, um, so two police officers in New Jersey have filed lawsuits against their chief of police, uh, alleging literally a years long pattern of discrimination and abuse over gender, sexual orientation and ethnicity. The guy's name is Thomas Mosier. Um, here, let me get you a picture of him because he definitely doesn't look exactly like the uh, sort of dude who would be doing this. Um, basically, uh, police Lieutenant Constance Cray, who is gay, claims Mosier subjected her to, quote, a pattern of mistreatment that has caused stress and embarrassment as a female homosexual supervisor and part of the LGBTQ community. In a separate suit filed by Officer Alan Barbu, who was born in Romania, claims Mosier has mocked his accent, told other officers to stay away from him, and created a trumped up paper trail to terminate his employment. Both suits, um, uh, uh, both suits document a, a, a history and a pattern of abuse by uh, by Chief Police uh, uh, Chief of Police Mosier. Uh, who would have guessed a chief of police in New Jersey is a racist homophobe? I'm shocked. I'm 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 ever so shocked. A white, bald, thumb looking. Skinheaded KKK looking motherfucking chief of police in New Jersey is a racist homophobe. Really? Wow. Also, did you guys know that the ocean is wet? <sighs> Sorry, nonsense. Y'all, you're like, you, you, you need to, you need to get with your people, nonsense. You need to get with your people. Looks like Bezos' rocket. I know, right? Fucking. <laughs> uh, I knew a cop that looked like, well, ex-cop, ex-neo-Nazi. He's the one that taught me about ghost skins. Oh, Jesus, ghost skins. Um, oh, water is wet. Mm, I know, right? Fucking crazy. A racist Jersey cop. I haven't heard of such a thing since... Uh, about three minutes ago. 
Oh God, what? Why is Pete Davidson a thing? Why is Pete Davidson even a thing? Yeah. Um. Oh, Nancy Pelosi's long over the hill, dude. She don't even like don't even fret. Nancy Pelosi barely knows where she is half the time. Um. So anyway. Fucking um, so back to Popo's bizarre adventures. Um, what this one's actually bizarre. Um, back on back on the fucking tr- uh, <laughs> um, back on the fucking train tracks of what the fuck. Um, so a black schoolgirl was strip searched by uh, police uh, by the Metropolitan Police Force. For those of you who know the Met, uh, I've done a fair amount. The origins of and problems with uh, uh, policing um, segment know the history of the Met to a certain extent. The Met is the daddy of all Metropolitan Police Forces in this world. If you want to know why your shit is as fucked up as it is, look to the Met. The Metropolitan Police Force of London is the originating point of a lot of this shit. So, a black schoolgirl was strip searched by police while on her period for being wrongly suspected of carrying cannabis. The quote unquote traumatic search by Metropolitan Police officers took place at the girls' school without another adult present and in the knowledge that she was actively menstruating. The strip search should never have happened, of course. Um, but according to the report surrounding the strip search, racism was likely an influencing factor in their decision to strip search her. According to the report, uh, the impact on the secondary school pu- pupil referred to as child Q because Britain actually protects kids fucking, you know, privacy was quote profound and repercussions obvious and ongoing because functionally what they did was rape her. They raped her. They raped her. This is this is rape, right? Like as long as you don't ascribe to a uh, genital penetration sort of situation with your de- your definitional set for rape, as long as you're not like the penis goes in the vagina equals rape, right? As long as you're not one of those morons, then this is. I mean, this is classic sexual assault, right? Let's just take the term rape away from here. This is classic sexual assault. These these the Metropolitan Police officers racially profiled a fucking schoolgirl who was on her period and then sexually assaulted her. Um, so yes, they were being, they were called to the school by the teachers who said, quote, they were concerned that the, uh, that the student had drugs in her possession because she smelt of cannabis. She was taken to the medical room, strip searched by two female officers while teachers remained outside. <clears throat> Notice that at no time did I mention that her parents or guardian was informed of what was going on. No legal counsel was obtained. No rights read to. They literally hauled this girl out of fucking class, took her to a fucking side room and forcibly stripped her and searched her. This is sexual assault. That's what this is. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, quote, according to the, the, the final, uh, the third party report, the local child safeguarding practice review that was conducted, quote, adultification bias due to race was a likely factor where adults perceived black children as being older than they are because they, seem, they see them as more streetwise and goes on further to say the disproportionate decision to strip search child Q is unlikely to have been disconnected from her ethnicity and her background as a child growing up on an estate in Hackney. So she's a poor black kid in the fucking projects. So the cops thought they could get away with sexually assaulting her. That's what it boils down to. Um, The girl gave a written account and in the written statement that was submitted for the review, she said, quote, she can no longer go a single day without wanting to scream, shout, cry, or just give up. All the people that allowed this to happen need to be held responsible. I was held responsible for a smell, but I'm only a child. I need space 
and time to understand what has happened to me and exactly how I feel about it and getting past this exam season. She's still concerned about passing her exams because at heart, she's still a kid. They've tri- like, we've beaten it into the kids' heads that like, you got to pass exams, right? Like she was raped. And one of her primary concerns is, am I going to be able to pass exams? This is the number this system did on this poor child, right? The, from the school system to the socio-political economic uh, 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 pressures that are being applied to all citizens throughout society to the actual very real rape at the hands of the Metropolitan Police Department of London of her. Um, yeah, I know, right? Public, right? Um probably a lot dig probably a lot um she did add quote i need to know that people who have done this to me can't do it ever uh, to anyone else ever again in fact so that no one else can do this to another child in their care unfortunately she's not going to get that healing moment there's there's no way that that's going to be a um <clears throat> thing. Uh, In a joint statement, um, Councillor Antoinette Bramble, Deputy Mayor and Cabinet Member for Hackney Council's uh, Council's Child Services, and the Mayor of Hackney, Philip Glanville, said, quote, they were appalled by aspects of the review and Child Q was subjected to humiliating, traumatizing, and utterly shocking treatment by police officers, actions that were wholly disproportionate to the alleged incident to which they had been called. This then exacerbated by the fact that the strip search was carried out at a school, the place where the child had an expectation of safety, security, and uh, and care, but instead she was let down by those who were meant to protect her. Um, So what has occurred as a result of this? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. The teacher has not been reprimanded. The officers are nothing, uh, have had no reprimands. They have had no formal complaints put in their file. They have not been brought up for review. They have not been fired. There have been no overarching changes. There have been no policy changes. There have been absolutely nothing. Um, Nothing. All that has happened is a child was raped by cops while the teachers stood outside having ordered the rape by the cops or asked having asked for the rape by the cops and now a child is left with a lifetime of PTSD to deal with and the dawning realization that society doesn't give two shits about her because she's one a girl two a poor person and three black so yeah she's got some hard lessons um, that she's going to be uh, taking on board um, as she moves forward. Um, <clears throat> if you want the truly infuriating part, here you go. I know you're like, but Kai, how could that possibly be? How is there something more infuriating than the child on her period being raped by cops because the teachers asked for it. Well, you haven't let me read the detective superintendent of the Met Central East Command Division uh, statement yet. Um, Detective Superintendent Dan uh, Rutland of the Met Central East Command said, quote, We recognize that the findings of the safeguarding review reflect that this incident should never have happened. It is a truly, it is truly regrettable. And on behalf of the Met police, I would like to apologize to the child concerned, her family and the wider community. That's it. There's no review. There's no firing. There's no policy changes. There's no investigatory panel that has been convened. There's no nothing. It's just, yeah, yeah, that sucks. Sorry. We good? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Deirdre. (laughs) Okay, fair enough, Deirdre. Um... Thanks for the follow, Kensai. Uh, yep. Uh, you know, fucking preach. Preach. Um, 
Then there's the um, then there's the the dude out of Colorado, um, who, I mean, this is just stupid. This is just fucking stupid. Um, this dude's deaf. He was arrested for not complying with police commands because he couldn't fucking understand them. Okay, deaf dude gets fucking commanded by the police it's like you know get on the ground get on the ground all right they absolutely worked him over they did the typical cop thing they kicked the shit out of him right he ends up in the hospital as a result of it after they learned he was deaf they still charged him with resisting arrest and assaulting a police officer. Because remember, if a, if a cop punches you in the face and hurts his hand, that's assaulting a police officer. You know that, right? I'm not joking around. That's not a fucking meme. That's not a joke. If, you, if a cop punches you in the fucking face and he hurts his fucking hand, that's on you. You're getting charged with assaulting a police officer. You understand that, right? Like that's a very real fucking thing. Deaf dude doesn't understand the commands that the cops are given to him. So the cops go all cop on him and they fucking assault the shit out of this dude, put him in the hospital and then find out he's deaf and they still charge him with resisting arrest and assaulting a police officer and threw his ass in jail for four fucking months without an interpreter to communicate to any of the staff. They essentially took a prisoner and cut out his fucking tongue so he couldn't talk. That's that's functionally what occurred there is that the Colorado Police Department fucking straight up got caught doing some shit by somebody and they chopped the fucking dude's tongue out and threw him in the fucking clink. No, nah, no, nah, that's fucking totally normal behavior. That's totally normal behavior. Um, yes, yes, it is, Dig. It is. Um, and are the ACLU crawling up their ass now? Not yet. Not to the extent that I would like them to be. Let's just put it that way. Did I, I wish the ACLU was up everybody's ass. Dude, the ACLU just needs to be up every single police officer's ass. I want, you know what? I want as many, there's like in, on average, there's like what, 800, 900,000 police officers, federal, state, local, fucking park, that sort of thing in this country. I want a million ACLU lawyers. That way for every single fucking cop in this land, there's at least one ACLU lawyer to just be on their ass 24 fucking seven. That's, that's what I'm after. That would be brilliant. Um, yes, Ken Sai, that is true. You could be arrested with a single charge of a resisting arrest. Yeah, that's 100%. Um, fucking. And let's, I think, I think we shall wrap this up um, with the, um, with the Palmdale Sheriff's, uh, the, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department um, in Palmdale, California. Um, well, uh, I mean, so they were following up on a domestic violence call that they had received earlier in the day. Now the call was valid. That's fair. That's fair. The, the, you know, all right. You got a domestic violence call. Somebody's in trouble. This is your function, right? I don't believe that as an anarchist. I think personally, you're just nothing more than the jackbooted thugs who maintain the status quo for an oligarchical elite that actually rule our society on a global level. But that's neither here nor there. Um, they got a valid uh, domestic violence call um, earlier in the day. So they arrive on the scene. Deputies say that they then tried to contact a random Hispanic male. You see the problem already? A random Hispanic male who is in the driver's seat of a vehicle. Deputies at no point clarify for investigative purposes why they had honed in on this man. I'm sure it had nothing to do with, look, a Mexican. But they honed in on this man. 
Um, Kenzai, um, exclamation sub will get you the link on coffee, please. And thank you. You can do single donations or you can do a recurring monthly subscription, just like on Twitch. More money comes to me as a creator and less money goes to Jeff Bezos as a piece of shit. So, you know, and also the, uh, anti LGBTQ mod staff that Twitch employs has a little less money in their coffers. Um, so please, and thank you if you so choose. Um, so deputies again, didn't, didn't clarify as to why they honed in on this particular individual. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that he was a Hispanic male. Um, anyway, <clears throat> So they profiled a Mexican dude sitting in a fucking car in the general vicinity of a domestic violence call that they had received. Um, and so they assumed he was the individual responsible for the alleged domestic violence. And keep in mind, they received a domestic violence call. They have no evidence of an actual domestic violence incident in progress. So all of this is an alleged incident at this point. So this man who has is not at the residence that they were called to is in the general vicinity. They have not verified any actual domestic violence call that has occurred yet. They just see Mexican dudes sitting in a car and they're like, get him. Right? So they fucking assume he's the individual responsible for the alleged domestic violence call. And well, he tried to leave. He tried to leave because he should not have been legally detained in any capacity at that point. And so he tried to leave. The deputies, on the other hand, had other ideas about this situation. Um, he attempted to exit in the vehicle, but according to the department, the vehicle the man was driving then hit two patrol cars. Again, this is according to the department. We don't actually have any evidence of this. But it was at that moment that the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department decided to shoot and kill the man. We still don't know how many officers fired. We still don't know how many rounds they fired, but we was killed uh, and the department did clarify that the victim of the deputy shooting, quote, had nothing to do with the alleged domestic violence call. Quote, it was deter later determined the suspect was not involved in the early domestic violence call. Deputies claimed to have rendered aid until the sh fire department arrived and took over. But when the fire department arrived, they declared him dead at the scene. So, yeah. <sighs> Hey, sapphic vibes. Well, we are just wrapping up the end of Popo's Bizarre Adventures. So, um, like it, it's, it, it, I'm sure it can only get happier from here. Kai is not notorious for co covering just some of the most depressing stories whatsoever in society. Um, but that is sort of the, the wrap up. Hey, thank you. I think that was probably coming in from, um, uh, from Kensai, but either way, I like to anonymize the donations just so nobody's personal information pops up. <clears throat> oh, you want the doom? Let's do the doom. Why not? Gur is great. Invader Zim is great. Gur is great. Um, Karina's interpretation. Two cop cars pull up on an area, see a brown person in a van leaving. Cop car intercepts, denting trunk. Van puts in reverse the moment he backs up. Shots put in person of color male. Yeah, pretty much. Um, oh, man. That's, uh, you know, I, we we decided that it, we should be, start doing a rec uh, recurring police malfeasance segment. Seeing as I cover it so regularly anyway, and I've written on it. For those of you who have aren't aware of the origins of and problems with modern policing, um, you go to my website, kaisthings.com, K-A-I-S things.com. So you can get essays, photography, whatever, streams, fucking, all of my stuff goes up on um, kaisthings.com. Um, and you can get the origins of and problems with modern policing essay there, um, where I elaborate upon the origins of this issue 
and how there's an unbroken thread that exists between the beginning and now and that we've never reformed, we've never changed, we've never improved, that it is very much the exact same system that we implemented back in the day, a couple hundred years ago now. 